Hello, welcome to Game On. Coming up... Are we doing a joke? No. Reach for the stars, climb every mountain high and... Reach for the stars. Nat competes in the National Invisible Table Headbutting Championships. Oh, look at that. And we shoot up in Shanghai. Sounds very unpleasant. Ah. First though, it's only 21 weeks till Christmas. A fact that when put like that makes me feel a bit weird. Yeah, I'm really not okay with that. Anyway, sure enough, the games companies are all gearing up to fight for the Christmas top spot already. And one company in particular is going in all arms flailing. Which one's that then? Microsoft. Project Natal. Oh, well, it's, the... it's not Project Natal anymore. What? What's it called? Connect. 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 It's been a long time coming, but finally Microsoft's Project Natal. No, no, is... no, no. no. Oh, not connect, Project connect, Natal. connect, it's connect, connect. K with a K. Yeah, yeah. First it was called Project Natal, then it was Connect for Xbox 360. Now it's still called Connect for Xbox 360, but it's finally here, and we're here to get hands on with Microsoft's wavy, wavy, hokey, cokey, jiggery, pokery piece of technology to see if it actually works. The Connect galleries are a massive installation in London's Covent Garden, taking over a giant warehouse to introduce the public to the greatly anticipated Project Natal. Connect. Connect. Connect, yes. Hello, I'm Tony. Uh, welcome to Connect Galleries. We're here in Covent Garden until the 31st of August. We're here to trial Connect. This is Connect here. This is the sensor bar. Um, we're inviting members of the public to come on down for half hour sessions where they can demonstrate the new games. So it's little snippets before it's launched before Christmas. Now outright, first things first, we should say Kinect works. The tech behind it is really very impressive. Yeah, the bits I found most exciting were the ones where I could just experiment with the on-screen avatar and see how faithfully my movements were translated. Much less chance of a Wii injury as well. Yeah, very true. Wii yeah. injury. It's quite good though. Doesn't work. No. The games like Kinect Adventures are entertaining with some great touches like photographs and licensed music, but all in all what we saw of Kinect fell short of the gaming revolution it's made out to be. That's not to say there's anything wrong with what we've seen of Kinect, it does work and that is good, but the titles we saw were more about being better than the Wii rather than striking out into new territory. So, thanks to the tech, playing Connect did feel very different, but the games made it feel a little too familiar. Connect Adventures and Connect Sports feel a bit more like the Wii cranked up to 11 rather than a totally original experience. Which is frustrating because Connect could easily feel like one. Yeah, it's certainly very impressive and probably does have the potential to be game changing, but so far we haven't actually seen anything to convince us it's going to. <laughs> Microsoft are currently focusing on the broad base appeal, leaving core gamers scratching their heads and feeling slightly neglected. The potential for AAA titles like Halo, Fable and Call of Duty to get properly connectified is incredibly exciting, but right now we only have an initial declaration of intent from Microsoft. Yeah, we haven't announced anything. I mean, I think this is sort of the beginning of you know, what's to come. And we're really excited for this November, and we're really excited for things that we'll be able to talk about you know, past Christmas and beyond. Once the AAA titles and indie developers sink their teeth into Connect, hopefully then we'll really see a change in gaming worth getting the hardcore out of bed for. Spartans never died, George. So currently we're still very excited about Connect, but we're not as impressed as we thought we might be. Hopefully though that'll all change soon, which is why we got the boffins in our graphics department to make this. What? Graphics? That's not graphics, that's like a piece of cardboard, No, no, no it's our really? Connectometer transmogrifier. Is it? Yeah, it's basically, it's a scale here that, that judges our excitement um, and our satisfaction okay, with, that's useful. with Connect. So yep. uh, tell you what, we'll start with excitement, that's easy. Pretty high. It's up here by Zong. Zong. Not quite squee, no, but squeeze. I mean, there's potential to, could, could obviously. Could push, yep. push squee. And then satisfaction on the other hand. Lower. I mean, that's kind of, I mean, it's, it, ooh, it's around hmm, really. Even pushing meh. Just around, yeah, hmm, meh. It's on Slightly the Slightly above meh. Hmm and meh, not quite ooh. Could um, go up to gosh. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, I would expect it to go all the way to wow or even yeah, but... Yeah, one currently, day. Currently, we're not... No, currently low, but plenty of potential. You realise this is mental. This is the most moronic thing you've probably ever done. Yeah. It is actually quite useful though. Yeah. So it can stay. It can stay? Yeah. Brilliant. You can't put it down there. 
Time now for a reach around. Huh? Hmm? What? No, yeah. Did you just say? It's time for a Halo Reach preview. Oh. What the hell was that? There are just seven short weeks remaining before Bungie's last Halo jump, telling the story of Noble Team as they struggle to save planet Reach from total destruction. This is Sierra 259. You got Spartans on the ground, sir. This new campaign trailer has just been unleashed by Microsoft, giving you a better glimpse at some of the environments and scrapes Noble Team will be getting themselves into. We got a preview of the campaign recently, which looks typically solid. As you might expect, it's very authentically Halo, but shakes up the Spartan experience in ways we didn't quite expect. You picked a hell of a day to join up. As you probably know by now, you play as a new recruit in the whole team of Spartans. At the start of the game, you have to follow team leader Carter as you complete various objectives as a team. It's a very interesting experience after only ever playing as the last remaining Spartan in the past. It essentially meant you were the only capable gun on the battlefield, playing as Master Chief flanked by a squad of Marines, each one frankly about as useful as an amphibious toaster. An amphibious toaster? But that would be brilliant! You could have toast in the bath. It goes soggy immediately if it hit in the water. It's a terrible idea. That's, that's the point of the uh, simile. I'd, I'd buy one. <laughs> Anyway, our Reach preview was not just a peek at the campaign, we also got a really good crack at the new multiplayer Firefight mode. Firefight was pretty much the only redeeming feature in ODST, Orbital Drop Shock Trooper, and now it's back in a much improved form. Most importantly, you no longer need to have three friends online to take it to the Covenant. Online matchmaking now allows you to club together with three randomers and get your Firefight on. A bit like online dating for Halo heads. Perfect. It also incorporates the loadouts we first got to grips with in the beta and some heavily customizable options. For instance, you can adjust which enemies you get in each wave and which skulls are active at any one time. You can then save those modes and share them online. The Forge, premiered in Halo 3, also makes a return for Reach, this time significantly updated. Immovable object. This is, of course, Bungie's last Halo hurrah, so they're keen to build as much as possible on the franchise they pioneered. However, they're also very much aware of where they've come from. The Forge features some truly impressive build options, allowing you to recreate some old franchise favourites. You know, we, I think the great promise of Forge itself is, is by utilising it within Forge World. And this is this gigantic, seamless environment that we've created that um, you know, has five distinct geographic zones, but it's really just one gigantic canvas that you're going to go into. It's like your sandbox, and you're going to build whatever you want to inside the space, and it's set on top of, you know, the picturesque halo ring. And within that, it was very important to us to give people tons of flexibility, but also wouldn't it be a great opportunity to bring back a couple favorite maps. So one of the more iconic areas of Forge World happens to be a canyon that's basically at the exact dimensions of the Halo 1 beloved map, Blood Gulch. Except this time, the rocks and the bases and sort of the key defining aspects are all built via Forge and they can all be dismantled and reassembled and you can add new things to that space to make an entirely different map. So Bungie are of course looking to make a big impact with Halo Reach, cementing their legacy with the Halo franchise before moving on to new projects. As excited as we are about Reach, we can't help but wonder what those projects are. I imagine they probably won't want to tell us. It's funny you should say that, they didn't. What with you departing from the Halo franchise and moving on to, to bigger and better projects, everyone is starting to wonder what those projects are. So could you please dodge this question in the most convenient 10 second soundbite possible? Um, obviously we can't say a whole lot about it, but uh, we can guarantee that the future is very bright. We're really excited about the future. Uh, and of course the Dodge is, uh, we're still uh, waiting to experience the, the Halo Reach with the rest of the fans, so right now that's really what we're most excited about. Unbelievable, of course they didn't tell us, you essentially asked them not to. Well I was trying to get a convenient soundbite knowing they weren't going to deliver the goods anyway, I might as well level with them. Terrible journalism, why don't you just do us all a favour and try making toast in the bath? Almost it from us at Game On, just time to take you to Shanghai and start shooting at you. Again, that doesn't sound pleasant whatsoever. Yeah, well suck it up, it's happening. Kane and Lynch are just a couple of weeks away from unleashing their foul-mouthed brand of carnage on the streets of Shanghai in Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days. Brady! We got some exclusive hands-on time recently with the sequel, which promises to really shake things up. 
This time, for instance, it puts you in the shoes of self-medicated psychopath Lynch. What kind of a shoe do you think a self-medicated psychopath would actually wear? Uh, plimsolls? Mm. Black? Maybe. Crocs? Maybe. You never trust anyone in Crocs. No. Yeah. Probably Crocs. <laughs> Footwear aside, the game's also breaking new ground in terms of the visuals. It deliberately guns for a rough and ready visual style, as though the game is actually a documentary you're watching on YouTube. Instead of loading, Kane and Lynch 2 tells you it's buffering, and when you sprint, the quality of the visuals deteriorate slightly, as though the camera's struggling to keep up. Go with me! There's also a realistic shaky cam effect to heighten the sense of action, which works remarkably well. It's a really impressive feature. So impressive, in fact, I felt a bit motion sick before I got used to it. Yeah, but you get motion sick at anything. You get motion sick watching somebody move. I do not. Yes, you do. Look. Feeling a bit. How are you feeling, Johnny? See? Stop it. That's obviously in Kane and Lynch. Where is he? Happily for Johnny, you can toggle the shaky cam on or off in the options menu if you haven't got particularly strong sea legs. Visually, then, Kane and Lynch 2 is anything but orthodox, but then so is the game in general. It's good to see you. Been a while. Playing as the unhinged Lynch is a bit of a culture shock at first, as you feel you can't always trust what he's up to. But soon you find yourself glad to be someone so deranged, as Dog Day's version of Shanghai feels unnervingly dangerous. Even if he has got a skullet. What's a skullet? It's long hair at the back and bald on top, you know, skull mullet. Ah, skullet. <laughs> The most immediately striking thing about the gameplay in Dog Days is the level of difficulty. Tight alleyways are combined with impressive enemy AI, thrusting you into a dangerous game world with few places to hide, forcing you to rely on your shooting skills and above all keep your cool. Kane and Lynch 2 then is looking to be an incredibly impressive package. If we did have one criticism, it'd be the weapons lack punch. It's difficult to take enemies down even when you've put most of a clip into them. Accuracy becomes all the more important as a result, but at times the aiming mechanic itself feels ineffective. Combine that with the ability of the AI to work around you when you're in cover, and you get a challenging shooter that verges on the frustrating. Happily though, it pretty much permanently remains on the good side, and we can't wait to see more. Listen to me, Mitch. That's it from us for this week. We're off to work on next week's opening joke. Yeah, today's was awful. It was bad, I can't even remember what it was. That I think we had one. Did we? No. You get pen, I'll get paper. We need to get no. started. See you next week. What time is it, Johnny? Five to three. Wrong, it's hilarious t shirt time. <laughs> there are just seven short weeks remaining before Bungie. How can you have a short week? Can't have a short week, can't have a long year. Having a, sh having a short week next week. Got Friday off. <laughs> There are just seven averagely spaced, seven day long weeks remaining before Bungie's last Halo jump. True, the story. true, it's true, it's very true. <laughs> First, it was Project Natal. Now, Microsoft's Kinect for Xbox 360. Did I get it? Is that? That's, the one. That's good. Okay, we'll have to do it again Let's then. Keep, keep yeah, going. sorry. Yeah. You play as a new recruit in the whole team of Spartans. At the start of the game, you have to follow team leader Carter as you complete various objectives as a team. Team. Team, 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 team. Team, 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 team. Team, 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 team. First, it was called Project Natal. Then, it was Microsoft's Kinect for Xbox 360. Now, it's still called Kinect for Xbox 360, but it's finally here. Microsoft's wavy, wavy, hokey, cokey, jiggery, pokery is finally upon us. <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, I lost it at the end there. You're me. You. Go. OK. Oh, maybe. No. Maybe uh, me, me. It, I'll, uh, I'll, it, I'll, and then you, yep. and then Will. Anyway, most importantly, you know no. Oh my God. No longer. No, 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 no. Well, of course they didn't tell us. You essentially asked them not to. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That's the blankest face I've ever been met with. <laughs> On the streets of Shanghai, in Cane of Lynch, two dog days. Cane of Lynch. Cain, I you said Cane and Lynch. Did you? Know? you? I think you said Swear. Cane of Lynch. Unbelievable. What were you thinking? You essentially asked them not to tell us. Well, I knew that they weren't going to give the goods, so I just decided to get a convenient sandbite. Sand, sand bite? Sandbox. Unbelievable. Of course they didn't tell us. You essentially asked them not to. And well, I was trying to get a convenient sandbox. Sandbite? Sand oh my god. Sandbite. Damn it. Cane of Lynch. Cane of Lynch. Yeah, but you get motion sick just watching somebody else move. I do not. Yes, you do.
<laughs> Did we? No. You get pen, I'll get paper. We need to get no. started. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Restricted by the wire. <laughs>